Bless the Lord Jesus, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to another weekly devotional. For the month of August, we have been looking at when God writes your story, and for this week, we'll consider the story of the Apostle Peter. Psalm 139 verses 15 to 17 is a beautiful reminder of how God pins our lives starting from our very birth. It says, My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet be none perfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. There is no doubt that from conception God is writing our story and making note of our progress with the intent that his will will be done in our lives. God is the author of your story. He is cognizant of every line, every paragraph, and every chapter. He knows the beginning, the body, and the conclusion of your story. Peter, a significant character in the early church, understands clearly that his life is not his own, and God has a clear plan for his life, and his life will never be the same. His focus, his life's passion, and his impact will never be the same. Here, this simple Jewish fisherman, originally from Bethsaida, moved to Capernaum with his family, existed in a time of Roman rule where he and others like himself were heavily taxed. On a good day, he had to pay heavy taxes for his catch, and on a bad day of fishing, it's possible they thought he was stealing to evade tax. Daily living is not the happiest for fishermen because of the tyranny of the Roman government. In parallel to this situation, John the Baptist is on the scene creating a new revolution. He is baptizing men unto repentance, and here he baptizes Jesus, the one who is to come. Peter comes across the greatest intersection of his life when he meets Jesus. Jesus enables him and other fishermen to catch fish the weight of which would cause his boat to possibly turn over after toiling all night and catching nothing. Seeing this miracle, Peter is astonished and falls to his feet confessing to Jesus that he is a sinful man. Jesus not only supplies his need but also changes his life's direction. How, you may ask? He changes his name, same as he did Paul. He said you are no more Simon but Cephas or Peter. That's what happens when God's hand is on your life, when you are handpicked. He will commission you for purpose regardless of your background, occupation, education, social status, or even your personality. This intersection changed Peter's life forever. He is no longer a catcher of fish, but he will be reaching men and women for the kingdom of God. Peter chooses to forsake all and follow Jesus. We know he was married but still he left his fishing career and potentially a normal family life to follow Jesus. But Peter's sacrifice is worth it because he now has a front row and center view of what God is able to do. He witnesses Jesus' first miracle at the wedding in Capernaum where he turns water into wine. He saw Jesus heal his mother-in-law who was sick of fever. He literally saw Jesus raise Jairus' daughter from the dead, amongst many other miracles. Peter now knows that there is no telling what can happen when Jesus is in the room. After seeing Jesus feed 5,000 men along with women and children, Simon Peter is in for another life-transforming experience. Jesus isn't singling out Peter merely as a favorite, but he is equipping him for the task that is ahead of him. God is giving Peter faith-building experiences. The disciples are on the boat, and after come strong winds, waves, and turbulent seas. They are all panicking, but here comes Jesus, walking on water. He calls for Peter. Why Peter? Peter needs to know more than anyone the importance of keeping his eyes on Jesus. Peter will die a martyr's death. Peter will be a leader in the early church and preach Christ. 
Peter will encounter experiences where his faith cannot be shaken. Peter walks on water as long as he keeps his eyes on Jesus. Let's pause for a minute. When God has his hand on your life, you don't know what's ahead. You don't know how God will use you to minister to his people. You don't know the deep revelations he will give just to you and no other person. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. Not at this stage in the story. Life may seem to have ups and downs, highs and lows, but keep your focus on Jesus. Peter is special as God reveals to him who Jesus is. Jesus asks the question, who do men say that I am? Peter is the only one who declares the right answer. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. God is revealing himself to Peter specially because of the work he has for him to do. Jesus replies to Peter that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Peter is continuing on his journey with Jesus, and he is experiencing healing, miracles, teaching, and revelation. He even sees another side to Jesus. He sees Jesus chasing the money changers out of the temple. But things take a U-turn after Jesus talks to his disciples at the Last Supper and tells them of things to come. He lets them know that one will betray him. But Peter, with his hot-headed and passionate personality, declares that all will leave Jesus, but not him. Jesus reprimands him and lets him know that before the cock will crow twice, he will deny him thrice. Jesus is later arrested, and again, hot-headed Peter cuts off the ear of the soldiers, and Jesus had to replace it and remind him that he must suffer these things. In life, we learn that our trying to fix the scene is not necessarily the will of God. What do I mean? Peter is learning that the will of God requires suffering, and Jesus at this time cannot be rescued but has to go through the suffering in order to redeem mankind. When men and women later inquired of Peter's affiliation with Jesus, Peter denied him thrice, just as Jesus said. Peter is now devastated and nowhere to be found at Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus is resurrected and is then seen of the twelve. Jesus reminds Peter to feed his sheep, and tells him in parables of more things to come. We see here that Jesus came in Peter's life to redirect him and commission him for the work he has for him to do in his church. He asked him three times, Lovest thou me more than these? Peter realizes that God's vested interest in him has not changed. At the end of Peter's life, he dies a martyr's death for the cause of Christ. This sinful fisherman, who became a disciple, then an apostle, then a bishop and teacher of the early church, is a true testament of God's right in one story and radically transforming one's life. God doesn't rid him of his natural zeal and passion, but infuses his love in his heart, and coupled with zeal equals an unstoppable advocate for Christ in the Jewish community. What have we learned from Peter's story? God can change your passion and redirect it to do his will, but you must be willing to give up all to follow Jesus. Following Jesus will allow you to experience fascinating times, miracles, healings, and revelations, and so on. But when the storms and winds blow, remember to keep your eyes on Jesus. God will leave you in a situation for you to come face to face with your character and faults. But remember as he told Peter, I am praying for you that your faith will fail not. Remember, someone is praying for you. Finally, God's will and purpose for your life doesn't change at a moment of failure. Failure is not final. God is not the quitting kind. He will invest in you, teach you, rebuke you, restore you, all so that you can be who he has called you to be. Let's take the limits of God. Failure is not final. Allow God to continuously write every page of your life and watch him make you into what he has called you to be. 
You are not just an ordinary fisherman, but you are a pillar in the Lord's church. You are not just an accountant, you are a preacher of the gospel. You are not just a tailor or a dressmaker, but you have the gift of healing and deliverance. You are more than what meets the eye when Jesus gets a hold of you. God is writing a beautiful story of your life, every chapter, every page, and every line. God bless you, in Jesus' name.